What is going on, everybody? It is David Palmer, the Leo King, and uh, we are live here on Facebook on Halloween. I know I should have probably been wearing something, but uh, I've been moving, so Halloween's kind of erased from my life. And it is a World Series night, so it's kind of an odd Halloween, isn't it? Anyway, thank you all for being here. Thank you for always joining me every week and talking about the astrology, the universe, spirituality, whatever we like to call it as long as we can try and navigate what is going on, you know, in life. And um, we got a big full moon to talk about this week. We also got two other pretty major transits happening alongside the full moon. So um, it's interesting that a lot of this stuff is going to ramp up more towards the end of this week. So it it is like the energy is coming to much more of a culmination point towards the end of the week. Um, which I think is going to be interesting to overview with everybody today in the charts. If you've never been on the show before, um, it is really cool because we do do it live, of course, on Facebook. I do it so I can read people's comments, see what people have to say, and it, it truly helps out, you know. So, um, and especially because this is a, a Halloween show, you know, it'll be kind of cool to see what people have to say about Halloween and maybe yeah, they, they have some cool insight. We'll start with just some fun about, you know, this is Scorpio season, right? Like the holidays fall in alignment with zodiac signs perfectly. Like take Scorpio, for example. It rules ghosts and ghouls and darkness and scary things and having fun, you know, um, in, in, in a scary way. Uh, you know, there's a lot, you know, Scorpio always can get a bad rap, but there's a lot of awesome and great things about Scorpio. Um, but of course it's in Halloween, right? Thanksgiving in America is during Sagittarius. Let's just eat as much as we can and just, you know, laugh and feel good through quite a time where we know that the shift of darkness and winter is coming. So Thanksgiving is also a gratitude thing, right? And Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius, is very gratitude-ish, right? And very positive. And Thanksgiving's all that. But what's so funny is Christmas falls on, on Capricorn. And so the whole time that we're building up to Christmas, it's this really big Jupiter, you know, Sagittarius time, woo, get the gifts and cheery spirits and holidays. But if you ever notice, Christmas Day is very Capricorn. It's all business. Everybody, okay, what time are you going to be here? I'm going to be here at this. And it's always, you know, a little bit more calm around the Christmas tree, a little bit more serious about fulfilling the tradition, you know, which is Capricorn traditions and it's much more traditional you know there's something about uh, every Thanksgiving where yeah there's some traditional aspects or even every Halloween there's some traditional but Christmas has the ultimate of traditions you know same thing with New Year's Eve right it it falls in Capricorn like we're turning the clock and we're turning it at the exact time and time is what rules Capricorn so it's kind of fun to always look at how each zodiac sign actually rules a holiday And how that holiday goes with that zodiac sign and how it really does, you know, go with things. I think it's interesting that um, in Scorpio as well, we do the World Series in October, right? And, uh, you know, it is very Libra Scorpio-ish. And then it kind of comes to the Scorpio thing where it gets really intense. This World Series has almost obliterated me emotionally. I mean, I honestly, I've had to turn it off and then I'll turn it back on. It's like, it's like a total, like, like I can't even describe it. It, it is extremely life-sucking. And actually, I'm competing with the World Series right now because everybody's tuning in. It starts at five, just clicked on now. So it's going to be kind of hard to uh, compete with that because I'll be honest, even in the spiritual world, you know, it's kind of hard to compete with the World Series right now. No matter how much cool info I'm going to give you all right now, World Series is hard to do. Anyway, that was a fun little thing about zodiac signs and holidays and how they're very connected. Let's just do a couple more real quick because people seem to be liking it in the chat. Um, and somebody said, go Astros. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm a Dodger fan. Um, the thing about holidays also that, that comes up is uh, Valentine's Day in Aquarius, right? It always happens in the sign of Aquarius, February 14th. You'd think it'd be much more um, feeling like a love vibe, but there's always this kind of, I don't know, Aquarian detachment vibe to it. You can try to do it much more, but it's not the rush that you'd think of love. It's like kind of like uh, an odd way to express our love to each other by having to do it through weird things, right? So um, 
it's funny on how I think more holidays, especially around Valentine's Day, don't feel like love. Everybody always goes, I don't know about it, or I don't know, you know, or you always do everything you can, and it never really does feel the same way. So there's always a weird feeling around that. My favorite ones, though, are always the odd ones, like um, uh, July 4th, Independence Day, in Cancer, celebrating our home and our foundation of life, um, and, and feeling comfortable, and barbecues, and all that kind of thing. So each, each zodiac sign, really, and the holidays that fall into it are exact mundo to the vibration in which they hold. So kind of interesting there. Now let's go straight into the astrology because I know a lot of people are dying to see uh, you know, what this full moon's about. It is a big full moon because it is in between eclipses. So when I mean that, it means that literally you got to remember that the last eclipse um, was at 21 of Leo, right? So it was right here where the North Node, by the way, just passed. Uh, or 20, it was at 28 Leo, sorry. But um, uh, this area is, 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 I was thinking of August 21st, but this area right here is the last time that we had the eclipses. And it was also 15 degrees of Leo that the lunar eclipse was. So look at this. Now we're halfway through. The sun is now to its halfway point in between the next eclipse, which is going to happen, the lunar eclipse, which will happen uh, January 31st, which is going to happen over here at 11 Leo and 11 Aquarius. So we're at the exact halfway point with this full moon. So I wanted to show you those kind of points right there. Let's get rid of uh, this one if we can. Oh, I don't think we can. Hold on. So we're halfway through the eclipses. And I think that this full moon is going to bring up a lot about what you were dealing with this summer and a lot of the emotional issues and anything that you've been dealing with since then and kind of pulling it to the culmination point at this, at this juncture. This is a major juncture point in people's life. Mercury just got done squaring the north and south node. So this is always our environment shifting and our destinies shifting very fast and rapidly. It's an interesting time because at the exact same time that we're having a full moon in uh, Taurus, which remember, the moon in Taurus is exalted, which means the moon loves to be in Taurus. It's the happiest it can be. What's better than money, feeling good, massages, nice beach houses? You know, Taurus wants the best. It's Scrooge McDuck. It's the millionaire card, you know? I mean, the moon in Taurus, that's what it is. And so you want to feel great. There's nothing better than having the best quality, right? So Taurus represents quality. When you go to CVS and you're looking at shampoos, you know, there's the $1 ones, you know, and then there's the, the top shelf ones that the salons carry and stuff. And that's what Taurus weighs out is like, I want the best one. Same thing with cars. You can have leather interior with a sunroof or you could have cloth without one and roll up windows. It depends on your personality. I'll be honest with you. There are people who get really triggered by moon and Taurus stuff or money, or feeling good, or quality stuff, right? Some people don't feel like they need that, and that's totally very scorpionic, right? So you'll notice kind of more of a scorpionic uh, aspect in people's energy. They really don't care about the quality, just care as long as it gets the job done, right? Scorpio uh, is an interesting sign. It's main objective is to get down to the exact root of what it is and feel it fully. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad or ugly. That's why it goes into the dark places. Um, it's an orgasm, right? It wants to, it'll just do whatever it can to get to the orgasm. It doesn't matter if you're having an orgasm on a bed. It doesn't matter if you're having an orgasm on a couch or even if you're outside hanging out in the wilderness. You're still getting the orgasm in Scorpio. It is this moon in Taurus that goes, ah, I would like it on velvet sheets. I would like it uh, in a bed, not the car. I would like it if I was, you know, this is what rules like lingerie and stuff like that. Like, and I'm using the sexual aspects because this is Scorpio time. It is very easy to use these analogies to help you understand what's going on with a full moon in Taurus is all the aspects of your life, of the things that you really are reaching down for to, to, to explode and to change. And especially with Jupiter here and Mercury here, these are two intellectual signs trying to understand what's going to bring you more passion. What's going to give you more drive in your life to change? Well, 
The full moon in Taurus is a moment to say, am I aiming in the right direction as far as am I doing things at the highest quality, right? Am I doing things that are actually going to make me feel good at the end of the day? Because sure, Scorpio might want it, right? Scorpio might want it. You know, um, you might look into a corner and go, I really want that, right? But is it good for you? You know, the moon in Taurus is what reminds us what's emotionally good and how we take care of ourselves. So this is a very major full moon because there are lots of things we want, but in order for us to maximize, because Taurus and Scorpio together is about maximization at the highest degrees. Let's maximize the benefit, especially with Jupiter, which is opposing this full moon. Let's maximize this in the best way possible. And the way to do that is by, okay, I know what my objective is. I know where I'm aiming for. I know what whatever the orgasm is in life that I'm trying to reach. But what is it at the core, though, that I can do to make sure that it's going to hold its value, that it is really worth doing, right? And because the moon deals with self-care, am I, am I putting my self-care at risk for reaching for something or go, for going for something that my passions want, but maybe isn't worth it, right? It reminds me of a criminal. A criminal criminal's charts kind of have this aspect because it's like, okay, you want $1,000, and you have an opportunity right now where you have a gun and you can go into a store, okay, and rob it. Okay, you can get that $1,000 quick, but the repercussions of the value of doing that, is that $1,000 worth the pain, the suffering, the extremes of hiding, the running, the, the physical task, the moral tasks that you put on yourself. I mean, you have to start to mount up all the things and it goes, yeah, really at the end of the day, robbing a liquor store for $1,000 is not worth $1,000 at all because you're paying way more in fines. You're paying your life. You're, you're casting a check of your life on the line for that and 15 years in prison, especially if you fire the gun or if you harm somebody or you threaten people, or you hurt a cop, I mean, now you're adding more, I mean, you're signing your life away. So a full moon in Taurus is the epitome of, is this all not only just worth it, that comes at the end, it's, okay, I know what I want, but how is the best way to get there? I don't want to have to get there in a, you know, it's, it's easy. Scorpio was like, okay, I have found the secret, or I have found the tomb. It's like Indiana Jones, right? Indiana's always searching for artifacts. And when he finally finds an artifact, okay, it's like, oh man, this isn't, you know, what's the smartest way to get through this thing? Indiana tends to be not much moon and Taurus. I think he kind of rushes into everything. And there's this aspect to where now you got to deal with the spiders or the rats or the, the rolling ball that's going to kill you or a million things that, you know, come up that maybe you weren't not only thinking of, or maybe you were rushing into things. A full moon in Taurus is also about stabilization. It's about, okay, let's stabilize the environment and make sure that we have a clear understanding of the right thing to do to maximize our position right now. You know, um, it's like in a race too. Okay. I want to reach the finish line, but if the tires are about to blow up and I haven't gone to the pit stop, well, maybe I, maybe I need to do that real quick. Put the best tires on so I could race the car as fast as I can. Now, it's interesting because at the same time that this is going on, and let's get off the full moon real quick um, with the, some of our slides and let's get rid of this Mercury stuff here. All right. All right. Um, we have the planet Venus and its natural sign of Libra right? Making an exact opposition. Look at this, 2555 at the exact moment of the full moon to Uranus. Look at this, full moon, 1158, right? Look at the sun, 1158. These are exact moments that are happening at the exact same time astrologically, no coincidence. Now, Venus opposed Uranus is actually extremely similar to everything that I was speaking about. Because Uranus is a planet that says, let's move forward. Let's find the higher realms. Remember, Uranus rules the heavens. 
what is a way for me to find my stairway to heaven is kind of a, I know it's a cliche kind of cheesy analogy, but it's interesting to say, okay, how do I elevate my life to a better place? And when elevate, it's different than the quality of life, right? So maximizing it is more of a physical, emotional way of Scorpio and um, Taurus. But Aries and Libra is finding balance, finding harmony, finding where, when to use your strength. But more importantly, Venus, Uranus, depending on whatever sign it's in, is all about raising the vibration in your life of your values inside of yourself. So it's like, okay, I know I'm better than this. I'm not going to play that game, okay? I know I can do this better. It's time for me to own it more. Venus opposed Uranus is also you know, preparing yourself when it comes to how you relate to people, it's time to maybe break apart or change the way in how you relate to people, how you treat people, how you deal with people. And this is in tune with your value systems, you know? So it definitely is a very kind of hold the line energy of like, no, I'm not going to do it this way anymore in my life. I'm not going to be treated this way anymore in my life. I'm not going to respond to things this way anymore. I'm more worth this. This is how I really feel in my life because Uranus is going to bring out just crazy feelings of independence and self on top of Venus that's in the natural sign of relationships and its natural planet in Libra, right? So it's like there's a lot having to come up about also in partnerships coming into some very culmination points because Uranus is kind of a, a culmination realization moment as well. And especially with the full moon and Taurus, there's some big realizations on how to maximize things, how to react different, how to change situations for the better and stabilize and bring positions to where things aren't so crazy or hectic or more importantly, so, so out of a place that they don't work. Now, it's, it's all happening at the same time that Chiron is squaring Saturn. I mean, you can't make this up, this full moon, okay? And this is because I think a lot of ourselves have gone through a lot of situations. It doesn't matter if you have a broken arm. It doesn't matter if you're out of money. It doesn't matter if, you know, can't get your dick hard or something. I don't know. Whatever it is that you're going through, like, it's crippling. And there's a lot, everybody's going through something very crippling right now in their life, okay? And this is about overcoming and finding strength in ways that aren't about, you know, putting your bootstraps on and kind of, I'm, that's how I'm going to get through it. This is a week and this is a full moon that's saying, I'm going to find a better quality of life. I'm going to take that step towards that place. And by doing that and by letting go of the past and by, by really kind of getting over the issue, because I'll be honest with you, I think sometimes like, I don't know why this came up with my guides today, but I was thinking about the World Series and the Dodgers and how the Dodgers lost and that they have to win tonight to move on to Game 7 to win the World Series. And if they don't, they don't. And I was thinking like, And, and this goes in all things in life. Like sometimes when we try so hard to fix something, right? Or, or to win or to do the things we want, we don't. And I actually learned this personally um, just recently when I raced in the world finals of jet skiing. I raced the whole season, got first place in so many events, got first place overall on the West Coast, got to the world finals. It was a totally different story, you know? The, the, everything's different. You don't know all the little ins and outs. You don't know all the little things. But also just you ride different. Just how in the World Series, these guys are playing different, right? But, but maybe the key to the f getting out of the frustration of losing or having a problem in our life, because the Saturn Square Chiron aspect is a loser kind of aspect, like a feeling like you've lost, a feeling like you've been given a really shitty hand, like, even, like one of the worst hands ever. Um, and, and, and I think that maybe this is also how to over... At the same time, I want to say this that there's always the duality. The other aspect of this is overcoming extreme, I've been given the worst hand in my life and kind of realizing that you have found the ways, you have found the solutions with Saturn to overcome crippling aspects in your life. So I wanna put that out there too. But 
the whole point that I'm using this story is maybe sometimes instead of trying so hard to win, right? Trying so hard, especially for the Dodgers, like it's like maybe maybe it's just like having fun and just doing what you know how to do. Doing the quality of the things, stepping up your positivity. There's, there's a lot about stepping up your positivity right now because, you know, in this chart, yes, a full moon in Taurus is about remaining positive, okay, about things because a Scorpio stuff and a Scorpio, you got to remember Jupiter is like a huge magnifying glass on the situation. And then you got Mercury, which is in Scorpio uh, during this full moon and the, the build up to this week. So, you know, there's just like so much in Scorpio world. Sometimes this is the underworld. We see the dark things of things. We see, we see scary things. We see things that are behind the veil so, so deep. But this full moon in Taurus wants us to see the flowers. It wants us to see the earth. It wants us to see what's grounded and what's great. And Uranus as well wants us to see the heavens and God and a higher vibration and our strength more. And, and everything's, these are the positions that are opposing these areas down here that are dealing with, you know, our questions about things, especially in Libra, our questions about our values, our questions about certain relationships, and all these things that are kind of being revealed in our deeper inner self. So I think a lot of this is realizing like, no, you haven't, Yes, maybe you have been given the shittiest hand in the world right now. And maybe you have finally found a way to overcome some of the shittiest hands in your life. And you're healing those right now. And I think a lot of it is how to deal with it in higher vibration right now, owning your value more, knowing your value. And, and this is a week to really move into that. Move into a higher quality of yourself, a higher quality of life. Testing yourself whether, you know, like imagine if you were a car. Like I always use this as an analogy with second house energy. It's like... Okay, what are the things that make you, you great? That's the first place to start with in Taurus. Like, Scorpio always starts with the, the things that fucking suck, right? I hate this. I don't like this. I didn't get off well. I didn't, you know, it's like, okay, okay, okay. It's like, let's reevaluize the situations. And I think that this is a huge moment in your life to re value certain aspects, certain relationships, certain people. There's definitely a lot of relationship aspects. I mean, Venus and Uranus in opposition are the two planets that deal with relationships, and they are in opposition. So this is going to be on how you deal with relationships differently, what relationships are changing the values in your life, what relationships are changing where you want to go in your life, where you're going to be going, and how you're going to be going, and so forth. Um, and then healing major crippling past situations. But you have to kind of go into those situations and heal them. Um, and you, this is definitely not a good time to give up on your life or give up on energy because this is a huge test week um, with all these aspects that are coming about pushing through. And it's not bootstrap pushing through. It's pushing through with a positive attitude, seeing things from a higher value standpoint deep inside of yourself. Um, one of the last uh, transits that uh, I wanted to talk about that um, is coming up this weekend is Mercury, uh, which is in Taurus during this full moon right, which is going to happen Friday, but Mercury slips into Sagittarius, okay, which is a very positive sign, fire sign, but Mercury's at detriment here, so it's not as strong, but it will be here until, I think it's like January 9th or 10th, somewhere in there. That's a long time. Mercury's going to be here for over about two months, yeah, give or take, it's like two months. And when you have Mercury in Sagittarius, uh, and this is going to begin now, uh, I think a lot of this is going to be this, this huge search. Okay, Mercury in Sag is a long search. Mercury is frustrated in Sag because Mercury wants to figure things out. Quick, quick, I want the answer now. It's an iPhone. It's like a text message. Okay, what did they respond? Did they not respond? You know, it's like Mercury in Sag is like, hold on, let me find out. This, the, the text message isn't working. I'll go to their house. I'll drive there. I'll talk to them. I'll get whatever the information, uh, and I won't be able to talk to you, but just tell me what you want. You know, Mercury and Sag goes on a deep search to understand certain information, look at things, and because this is the final round of Saturn and Sagittarius coming up here uh, in November, because this is um, so many, like, culmination points coming up here, and with Mercury and Sag, there is this last, because also Sagittarius is a, is a planet uh, or sign of change, and Mercury is a sign of change, you know, and Mercury is going to go retrograde, remember, in Sagittarius, in the sign of Sagittarius, on the galactic center point. Um, pretty interesting. And at the end of Sagittarius, there is this huge coming into this month, like, if you maximize out, and especially with this full moon, if you maximize out your life, 
by living in your higher self, living in a higher quality of self, relating with people differently, healing a lot of your crippling wounds, stepping into a much more positive place, and you know, finding a, 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 a better center of self, you will, on this search, search for some of the best things you've ever wanted to find in your life. But this search that is going to go underway starting this weekend after this full moon will all be determined on what kind of search is it. Is it the search for just survival of Scorpio? Or is it the, the search for manifestation at the highest degrees? And the, the, so the adventure that's beginning, and already that's been underway, but coming towards its highest peak and its greatest treasure is the determination of how your self-worth is inside. So, best way I can describe this week and what's coming up, and especially where the search is going to take us through November and into December, and then when Saturn comes into Capricorn and all this stuff, it truly is like the search of what you're looking for and where you will end up and where you will go is based upon the price tag that you feel you're worth in your life. So um, write some questions. I want to look at that while I make a couple uh, quick announcements real quick um, here because I have some really cool stuff that I want to talk about real quick. Um, everybody wants to know what's going on for this weekend. So... My big event in LA. So if you can't make it, I've offered pay-per-view tickets for $49. And it's in a Facebook group. You can watch it whenever you want. So if you can't watch it live, even though the live is the best, because there's going to be a whole time where you can not only watch it live, but you can ask live questions to me. I am having um, a special guest sound healer that's going to be doing an awesome live sound healing that you can do live with everybody and in the vibrations and doing the ceremony and, the, and all that stuff that's going to be coming. I'm going to be doing a couple ceremonies during this live show. It's from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So it's a, it's a full day's work. So if you can't make this full course and about what the next five years is and rising through the darkness and navigating this next five years and this next major cycle, which is extremely bigger than the last five-year cycle that we just went through, this is what this pay-per-view event is about. If you want to go and you're in the LA area or you have some sort of hair up your butt and you want to come out, I have one-day tickets available, one-day tickets that are only $135 for the day. So if you want to be there for the whole day with everybody and interact with everybody and be there, it's 135 bucks. If you want to be there for longer, you can add more. We've got payment plans and everything. You want to be there for the Venice Beach thing. You want to be there for the Friday night hangout. You want to be there for the Saturday night dinner that we're putting on. We're actually putting on more than one meal, but um, uh, it's going to be super awesome. So I just wanted to put all that aspect there, but inclusiveastrology.com if you want to get the pay-per-view link to watch it live. It'll be a Facebook live, just like how you're watching right now, just it'll be you know, on a bigger stage, of course, and with a lot more people and a lot more aspects going on. Um, but that's at inclusiveastrology.com. Also, um, it is November, so I did the November horoscope. It's coming up uh, literally tomorrow, so you can get that now at inclusiveastrology.com right now. I go much deeper into this full moon, much more deeper into this month, how deep this month gets. It gets so deep. Much more in touch with that Mercury retrograde aspect coming up in December, Mercury through Sag, uh, some of the bigger stuff coming up with Mars and Uranus, Mars, Pluto, um, a lot of aspects coming up here uh, in November. We talk about that. Anyways, that's enough of the sales. Let's see what people have to say in the room. All right. Uh, yeah, somebody asked, I'm working when you're teaching. Can I watch the pay-per-view later? later? Yeah, you can watch it later. Um, the room also will be other people that are watching it with you or people that wrote their comments. You can read their comments, read their things, but that video will always be up there for eternity of whenever Facebook is live and it will also be recorded. And when I do upload it for people to download, uh, later on who somehow don't buy it, you will get the download thing later as well. Um, but the download is going to be uh, a different experience and at a different price and so forth. Um, and it takes a while for that download to come out. 
Um, I just don't put it up the next day because it's a lot of work and a lot of editing. Um, here we go. We got a good astrology question. How will the foundation Mercury and Sag end up from January, February career growth opportunities? Uh, I don't really know how it's going to do for career for, I guess, you individually for this question. I mean... Mercury is coming into Capricorn with Saturn in Capricorn. But you got to remember that Mercury and Saturn, when they meet up, unfortunately, they are just like Mercury and Mars. The only time that Mercury becomes a malefic planet is when it's teamed up with Mercury or Saturn. Or I mean, Mars or Saturn. So um, I think it's positive, but I also think there's going to be some grueling decisions to make with Mercury coming over Saturn that are, are, are much more... I mean, if you really want to talk about career growth, I, I think they're very steep and intense career growth. It's definitely not child's play, per se. It's some Monopoly stuff going down. Um, am I finished with accepting auditions for Future Life? I mean, we've, we've auditioned a lot of people. We've got our top people. We are literally at where we've picked, like, Half of the final people, we're at the last half. We're just finalizing right now, and we're about to reach out to them. So, um, I mean, we're pretty much there, but we always love you could set it in your submission, and if for some reason you're best, better than everyone else, I mean, that's how casting works. You know, we're not afraid to throw you in there, so you can still uh, cast if you would like. Um... We have a question. Yes, feeling stuck. Will we move past this energy? We always move past uh, energy. Although, you know, the reason why I'm doing this event coming up is because in a very simple term, what's coming up in the next five years is a game. And I hate to use that analogy, but it is. Capricorn's a game. It's a system, right? You either play the system awesome or you play it horrible, right? This is why people don't like don't understand the one percent um, mentality and the ninety nine percent like Capricorn in the system that's in place is one percent of the people play the system to where it just benefits them in every way possible. Okay, and I know that we all are trying to find ways to make things more fair in life all the time. And there's a lot of that coming up with Mars and Libra and Venus and Libra. Um, you know, but you know, the system is still always going to be the system. It doesn't matter when it changes or how many regulations you put on things or how many, whatever you do in life, there's always going to be, I don't want to say a 1% because I, I truly don't believe maybe, well, maybe I do. I don't know. But I will say that at the end of the day, the next five years is about, I, I've used this analogy too, and some people really didn't like it. I'm still going to use it. It's sink or swim. Capricorn doesn't take prisoners. Actually, it does take prisoners. It takes the prisoners who get caught. It takes the prisoners who didn't win. It takes the prisoners who just didn't reach their goals, right? And, um, you know, at the end of the day, there's always a trophy. That's why it's ruled by recognition. If you ever looked in a tarot card, Capricorn also is the ruler, in my opinion, of the Six of Wands, you know, the, celebra the celebration. Celebrations come to those that play the game right and, and, and play their cards right and, you know, know how to maximize in their life. This full moon is no coincidence to me that it is the last major full moon in Sagittarius, in my opinion, um, that's extreme with extreme events going on, that is dealing with um, maximization. So it's almost like a test of like who's going to enter the next round maximized and ready to capitalize, literally capitalize, which is what Capricorn is about, um, and capitalism, right? I know a lot of people don't like capitalism. I don't know if there is a, I think that, you know, over the next 20 years, there will be a system in place that is one that we have all never done. So whether that, you know, whether you look at it as democracy or whether you look at it as capitalism or you look at it as communism or you look at it as socialism or something, I think there is a system that will come in place in the, in the revolution of the, um, the Aquarius generation that's coming in in 2020s that's going to definitely change things. But from now until then, I mean, you know, it's about how do you play the game better in your life with the astrology. And, and unfortunately, um, Another tarot card comes up to, to my 
feeling or what my guides want to share with is the five of pentacles, which is, you know, a wounded, you know, person on a, like, a, I think it's like a peg leg and then like a homeless woman outside the church, you know, it's like, I want to live in a world where that doesn't exist. I do. I want to live in a world where everybody is just doing awesome. But for some reason in the 12 zodiac signs and the way that consciousness works is with every, you know, and even it's proven, I think, scientifically, it's like with every action is going to be a reaction of things. And, and, and then also, in my opinion, in an opposite position, you know, with sunlight and sunrise is going to be sunset and darkness. So, I mean, I think we'd be fooling ourselves to think that with rich energy, there would not be extremely poor and out of it. Or with being really stuck would be the opposite of stuck and flowing at a thousand miles an hour. I mean, you know. I've been there so I can empathize with everybody. I have been in my room before, not able to leave for two years with extremely bad panic and anxiety disorder and feeling like the world was just passing me by. I have been there living in my car that was broken, that barely ran, it didn't even run, with expired tags because it couldn't pass smog, going from place to place, sleeping in parking lots uh, with no money. Like I have been there. So I was actually, I was, you know, and, and this is a very personal story to me. And this kind of goes with this question. So I'm moving, right? And I think maybe I could put some pictures up. And I have some funny ones on here. Uh, <laughs> this, this was a Halloween one that got sent to me um, <laughs> about Hillary. Happy Halloween, kids. Oh, it was just that one made me laugh. So anyway, um, where is it? Uh, okay, yeah. So. Right, so I'm packing up all this stuff, right? Right, all stuff shrink wrapped, you know, like it's 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 tons of boxes, right? Like this was just a quarter of what we moved, okay? My wife and I over the last couple of days. And when the guys were done moving us out, they told us we had more stuff than any two bedroom apartment they've ever let off before. And I'm with my buddy, David Hauser, and we're laughing because he laughs and he goes, do you remember just four and a half, five years ago, you had zero, you couldn't even fill up a trunk and your trunk and your car didn't work. And I'm laughing. I'm like, I know it's insane, right? It's insane. So part of the story is one, it doesn't matter if you're down to nothing, you can always reach higher and reach to where you need to go. I don't care who you are. There are skills built within you for a reason. No matter, and I think that this is a lot of the Saturn Chiron shit that's going around right now. The Saturn square Chiron, which I think is like the strongest transit that we could probably talk about. Sure, there's a great full moon. Sure, there's a Venus opposed Uranus. Sure, there's all these aspects, but a Saturn square Chiron is rare, okay? That's the rarest of them all. Venus opposed Uranus happens every year, you know, pretty much. Uh, Full moon in Taurus happens every year, okay? Um, Saturn square Chiron in these signs does not, okay? So this is dealing with some very, very extreme situations that are, that are, that are affecting people in where they feel like they're being screwed over or where that they feel like they're so stuck. There's never going to be light at the end of the tunnel. There's never going to be a positive aspect. There's never going to be the um, health situation or the crippling situation or the money situation or the home situation or the, the friendship situation, the relationship situation, the love situation. The, uh, it's just all Venus or all, all Chiron square Saturn does, okay? All day long, here's, oh, hold on, here's Saturn, right, 24 Sag, which is dealing with our beliefs at the core. I don't care if you want to talk about all the other Jupiter stuff and all the Sag, Sag deals with beliefs, okay, it's a mind sign, it deals with our mind, it deals with our higher part of the mind, okay, it deals with our logical part of the mind that deals with our belief structures of where we see beyond logic, okay, where we see, where we see beyond our current environment, because what's the opposite of Sagittarius? Gemini, which is the third house, which rules the environment, okay, of one's, like, life, right, your environment, your neighbors, your siblings, right, 
Why do you think that foreign people, foreign friends, deal with Sagittarius? Because they're beyond. Like, you don't know what they're doing. You know what your brother and sister are doing. You know what their house looks like. You know what their things are. But all these people that are watching, let's say, right now in Australia that I'm talking to, or people right now that are in the room in a whole other state, I have no idea. I have no freaking logical clue of what they smell like, they look like, their room looks like, their vibes like. I mean, I can make my observations. That's what Jupiter does, right? So it's like, well, if they live in New Mexico, they might have a house that has adobe color to it, like maybe a purple or maybe a, like a, a yellow or an orange house somewhere, you know, in California, you know, that we're probably going to have Spanish style places, okay? And trees and, 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 you know, I mean, you can make the assumption or if we're down at the beach, you know, there's going to be surfboards and, and sport cars and Porsches and stuff. I mean, that's, you go to Beverly Hills, you know, it's like, I know, you know what it's like, but if I start thinking about countries I've never been to like China, I have no, I mean, I could, I could see, but I have to go there. And the problem is, is that people right now in their lives with Saturn, okay, squaring with all that energy we just talked about, Saturn squaring Chiron. Which Chiron is where you feel that you've been screwed over. Remember Chiron lost his immortality because he got shot by one of his own, I guess you could say siblings, brothers, uh, one of his own gods that he was a god with, lost his immortality because he got shot with a, uh, 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 an arrow that actually took away his immortality. I don't think there's anything more a better description in, in mythology of like being screwed over and giving the worst hands. Like, sure, losing a lot of money sucks. Losing a lot of this. Losing a bad relationship. There's some really bad things. Death. All these things are really bad. I know. But it's like you can kind of continue on. If you were immortal and lost your immortality, it would be a pretty serious deal, right? Or it's the same as like being mortal and then being dead. I mean, that's a pretty serious deal. Chiron, and when it's in Pisces, deals with these kind of like especially depressed aspects or stuck aspects where you feel stuck and you feel like you're stuck in a shitty situation or you just, you don't have enough energy to keep it going. So it's a belief energy that is in conflict right now in the highest ways of our feeling screwed over in certain aspects or aspects that you don't feel like you have enough power to overcome or get through. So it's pretty intense because it really is asking for people to truly, you know what? You're going to have to change your belief structures and you're going to have to realize you weren't given a shitty hand. You were, you were given a hand and you can make it through the game. Like you're not going to fail the game. Like I don't know how many times in blackjack I've played and I've been given a two and like a six, right? And I'm like, what the hell? You know, it's like, you know, it's like, how am I going to play this? You know, it's like, okay, let's just double down. Hope I get a face card. Boom. Okay. I got 18 or whatever. Like there's sometimes in the shittiest moments in our life are the greatest ones because they only open up a door that can be greater than what we're at. So there's a lot of that going on right now. But anyway, to go back to the story of this weekend, like I emphasize, I have been there with nothing, 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 nothing. I've had people try to tell me, oh, it's because of the way you look that you're living the life you are. Or there's, you know, everybody gets into the white privilege thing. Okay, I don't know much too much about that. If because I'm white, I'm more privileged for people to buy my astrology, then use that one all you want on me. But I'll be honest with you. I got to show up here every day and convince people with doing this astrology in a great way for them to buy my products and come to my shows. I don't know if that's because I'm white, but you know, at the end of the day, it's because of me showing up and doing the work. That's what I think it is personally. There's been a million jobs that I wish I would have got that I guarantee you it didn't matter what the race, the color, or the ethnicity of somebody was that got it over me. Because I can tell you, you know how many auditions I've done on so many different TV shows, commercials, hosting jobs, other astrology gigs, where they turned me down when I thought I was doing good? It, it's life. Shit happens. But I think that it, the, the, all this Taurus energy and all this energy is asking us 
to pull out uh, and get out of all these, you know, this is the issue is this Chiron square uh, Saturn thing is shitty beliefs, right? The belief like my ethnicity is the reason why. Now, I understand when it comes to African Americans and other ethnicities, so I get the white privilege. I don't want people to be like, I don't understand it. I do, especially of how people have been treated by it and the past of what's happened to people and other ethnicities. I get it. But there also comes to a point to where we have to rise through to the next thing, whether it's that or whether it's some guy who's broke and has nothing and finally has to figure out how to get through it. I mean, sure, they might be different in context, but they come back to the same belief system energy of let me get over the issue and the, the issue that's holding me back belief wise and find a way to maximize my life. Because if I continue to hold this, it's a lot like somebody who has a superstition, right? It's like, oh my God, I drive a red car, so I have horrible luck all the time. Or I, I have a great superstition this week. I've been watching the Dodger game on this one TV and they've lost every time I watched it on that TV. So I'm not gonna watch the Dodger game on that TV. Is that logically a belief system that's good or healthy for me? I don't know. But at the same time, am I going to hold on to that and not watch that TV in that room, which is the more comfortable room because of that? Like, am I going to put my life in a shittier place even more because of a shitty belief? That's the whole thing. Am I going to put my life in a shittier place because of a shitty belief system that holds me back in such weird ways that especially Chiron, it might not look like it holds you back, but it really does. And it's always in the weirdest way. So whoever gave me that last question is freaking awesome. Um... Yeah, and you know, another person writes, get over the victim mentality is what I get. Victim role of Chiron and Saturn is in square is the ultimate. I'm a victim. And you know what? There's good parts of this transit that's showing a lot of the things with sex and pedophilia and all these things out in the media that are just like, there's people that have just been robbed of their lives because of it and their emotions and stuff. And I'm not going to tell them that they need to get over their emotions. I think it's also a time where victims are coming out with it. So it's a two-sided thing. Like, there's parts of all of ourselves where it's like, okay, where were the victim at? We need to kind of grow up, right, Saturn, and believe a little bit more and get over at victim role. And then there's other spots where victims are finding ways to overcome their victim roles in a positive way and kind of find ways and solutions and aspects to it. So I think it's a win-win on both sides. Like, I think, you know, I think we all have a victim role. I think some victim roles are way worse than others. So I'm not going to say that we're all, you know, in the same boat when it comes to being a victim. I'll be honest, I don't have much to say I'm a victim about because I've been very fortunate in my life. I haven't really had many roles. I mean, I've been a victim to drugs and my own addictions in my life. I've been a victim to uh, bad relationships that were caused by me. Uh, I've been a victim to a lot of things, but that didn't stop me from my success or moving forward or you know creating the life I want. I mean, you know, so... It, 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 I know it's a, a shaky ground. I like to talk about those shaky grounds, though. They're fun. But at the end of the day, I think it's... Uh, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, it's like... We have so much more in our life that we can offer ourselves if we maximize. But it are these belief structures that are very weird, that are holding us back, that are ethnicity, culturally built in because that's what Sagittarius rules um, is, is not so much ethnicity, but much more of our culture, which if you kind of go into culture, there's a new counterculture kind of coming up in, in the world about ethnicity, right? And then there's another, there's other cultures that have their own. There's, there's women's rights. I, I saw a picture uh, the other day. It, it, it's a woman, uh, a, a white woman sitting in the middle of, I think she's like in Iran, or, or somewhere like that. And there's a bunch of, of women with their head, their, 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 their 
headdresses on so they can't show their head and they're all staring at the blonde chick like what the hell's going on why, why is she showing herself you know and i think that i think that there's there, there's it, this goes deeper down the rabbit hole in so many areas that we ever realized but you know i think at the end of the day we, we, we can have fun and I can sit here for five hours and talk about this stuff. Well, that's what I'm going to be doing at my conference this weekend. But um, use this full moon to maximize your life and get rid of your victim mentalities and get rid of your, your self-destructive beliefs that are destroying your greatness. That's what this full moon's about at the end of the day. And rising higher in our value system, rising higher around different people and learning to... You know, lately I've been getting some really shitty comments and I'm like, <sighs> as I'm like driving down Pacific Coast Highway, like I work my ass off so I can live on the beach. Like, and this comment's trying to change my life. I'll, I'll take the criticism. I'll look at it. And I actually do apply what people have said in negative that I didn't agree with to make my life better. But I also am not going to hold it on t- so much to where it affects my self-worth and myself. That's something that um, I think a lot of people are learning right now, babe, right now. So... Anyway, thanks so much for all the support. Truly appreciate it. Hope to see you guys on the pay-per-view aspect. Uh, It would be super cool if you were out there to watch. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for all your support. Truly appreciate it. Uh, Go Dodgers! I don't know, though. I didn't do the astrology of the Dodgers. I I think I did it before. I think they do have Saturn and Sag, and they're having their Saturn return. So we'll see if they do it. I haven't done the Houston one yet. but um, And then they did win in 88, which was Saturn in... Capricorn, if I remember. So maybe the Dodgers don't win this year, and then next year they go back and they win. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I have no idea. But anyway, I haven't done enough astrology to put out a prediction. So I'm just riding the wave like people who aren't paying attention because I think it's a little bit more fun. I I didn't want to look at the astrology of it. I actually don't want to know who the winner is. I kind of enjoy the little bit of the the fire there. Thanks so much for all your support. So much appreciated. Hope to see you guys out uh, at my event or uh, on the pay-per-view, and I will see you all later. Take care. The Leo King app is the world's first and leading video and notification astrology horoscope app for iPhone, Android, and computer. Get daily spiritual videos and addictingly accurate notifications alongside weekly sun sign horoscopes, tarot videos, and exciting new age entertainment videos by celebrity astrologer and TV personality David Palmer, The Leo King. Join today. You have nothing to lose with a seven day free trial and wake up to astrology like you've never seen before. Wake up to astrology like you've never seen before.